If all the princesses had Twitter, they would hashtag me too. Oh, goodness. Goodness is something Snow White said. Um, she would say like, oh, goodness me. <laughs> I haven't done that in like three years. <laughs> Here are some things you might not know about the Disney theme parks. <laughs> I worked at the main entrance of uh, Disney Hollywood Studios. That was my job was basically just being <laughs> like smiling, creepy security that just like suggests people should leave. I worked in entertainment at Disney, so I did a lot of different roles. I got to be friends with Cinderella and Rapunzel. I was best friends with Princess Tiana. <laughs> so friends with is the term used when you play this character. So I was Snow White. <laughs> when you're at Disney, there's only one Cinderella, Mickey Mouse runs it. You're not allowed to say, I play Snow White or I am Snow White. They didn't want anyone to know who I was. And you couldn't post photos of, this is me as Snow White. It was, this is my friend Snow White. <laughs> what advice would I give someone going to Disney? The best time I would say to go to Disney is any time other than the summer. Summer sucks ass. It's brutally hot. All the kids are there on vacation. There's just like waves of hot humanity coming in during the summer. So the best time to go, I think, is in October. Most of the time when I was working there, uh, I didn't see people for like whole half hour stretches. October in the daytime, it's actually pretty decent. The best time to go is immediately after the holidays are over. After Christmas and before Valentine's Day because the weather is absolutely amazing. It should be perfect peachy, peachy keen. That's what Princess Tiana would say. <laughs> Early afternoon and the evening is the best time because everyone's at lunch, babies and stuff like that are taking naps back at the hotel. Right in the middle of there, there's like a sweet spot where you can just go to everything. Um, so just like bring a bunch of snacks or something and then hit up, you know, Splash Mountain while all the kids are asleep. What are secret places only the cast knows about? Um, definitely the tunnels. Disney's very good at hiding things. We have tunnels through every park except for Animal Kingdom. The other term for it is called the Utilidor. The biggest underground you will ever see in all the Disney's. Magic Kingdom is actually on the second story because it floods so much in Florida. And then there's the tunnels underground. It's just like dark and creepy. Creatures that are like half in costume but half not. You have your giant dressing rooms, dining halls, you have everything. We even have a subway. Like All this? of that underground. The underground tunnels, oh my gosh. That's where the real villains are. <laughs> what can guests get for free? If you get a cast member at the right point of the day, you can literally just ask them, can I have a fast pass? And they probably give it to you. I know sometimes they do this thing where they pick someone and they give them a free night in Cinderella's castle or something like that, or they'll give them like an upgrade to a suite. Those things are so hard to predict. I couldn't tell anyone like how to go about doing it. I've seen some people give out hats as well, which is really cute. Um, and they always have those people with your carts. As long as you're nice to them, they could probably give you something for free. Someone bumps into and your popcorn spills, the cast members, the employees, they would run up and switch it out. And they'll replace it for free. Ooh, ooh, you ready? Okay, this is what you can get for free. Because Disney loves to extend the magic and make all the guests happy. You can complain enough to where you could possibly sometimes skip the line to see like Anna and Elsa or to see Princess Tiana and Prince Naveen. You'd have to complain to the right person. When we were at the main entrance, we'd pick like a random family and then we'd roll out the red carpet. And then they come in and it's like very cute. There's like fake paparazzi and stuff like that. But I, there's definitely something for like every area of the park. Uh, I would just ask one of the sweet old people in the morning. The cast members really are passionate about trying to make magic for everyone. If they can do something, they more than likely will. Particularly, you know, for people that are just really sweet, really nice. What should people do when they meet a princess? Oh yes, oh my gosh, I have so much advice. Always say yes. We're here to have fun, like play along. The more you play along, the more the more you get out of it, the more fun it is for you and them. Be yourself, interact naturally. Like don't be too shy and hold back because the more you interact, the more we feel, well, they feel as characters that they can be themselves. Just be nice, be friendly, be quick because we're trying to get through as many people as we can. And then number two is just, if you can kind of sit back and relax a little bit and just kind of like hold your camera and watch versus trying to direct the whole interaction. The kids are gonna be more comfortable, so they're gonna like open up and they're gonna talk more. Some of the little kids get really frisky and they wanna go inside the dress or go underneath the dress. And Tiana's dress is one of the biggest layouts. It's got like eight hoops. They'll try to go underneath the dress and, and one time the child got stuck underneath. If you have an infant, do not put them on a Disney princesses or prince or characters, anyone's lap, because I've seen explosions. Um, just don't put your baby on anyone at Disney. <laughs> what should park goers avoid? The characters at like 
park capacity. So that's when you start seeing all these characters because they're trying to peel people away from the line so the lines go down. If you start seeing like Rafiki or some of like the more obscure characters, they're just there just to like peel you off, but don't fall for it. See the characters first because they're not there all day and then do the ride. Definitely avoid the bathrooms at the front of the park. They're just so crowded. So there tends to be hidden ones everywhere. In terms of food, uh, the turkey legs are delicious, but they are literally like 2,000 calories. So I would split it with a friend. Stay away from any crazy beer. The Japan Pavilion in Epcot, it's called the Frozen Japanese Beer. But it's literally just like if at 7-Eleven you poured a Miller Lite beer slushy, and it, it cost like $14 and it was like the worst thing I ever tasted in my entire life. Um, have I ever been propositioned while in character? Oh my gosh. If all the princesses had Twitter, they would hashtag me too. To be honest with you, you'd be like very shocked. The brazen things people do. I've been proposed to many a times. People have attempted to kiss me, both male and female. Please don't be a creep when you go meet the princesses. They are people too, and most of them are married, so just like avoid that. The children, they'll pull the petals down, and of course that, that reveals Tiana's, you know, extra beignets. Don't try to kiss them. Don't be too handsy. Princesses do give out kisses sometimes to little boys and girls. Big boys and girls, no, they do not. So just don't ask. So we get it all the time. The daddies would come up and they'd be like, Princess Tiana is fine. And then Tiana would be like, all right, right over here, sir. Don't be touching my beignets. If you inappropriately touch any of the characters, you will be arrested. If you inappropriately make a comment, you will be kicked out of the park. The characters are all humans too. Oh, I did actually date Snow White's prince for a bit. <laughs> a lot of the princesses find their princes at the Magic Kingdom. They can turn into Drink come trues or nightmares. <laughs> Where do people go to hook up? Um, ooh. Yeah, well, there's like the classic, like, you know, go to the castle or whatever. That's probably a good date. People just make out all over the place in Disney. It's kind of a little. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you're, you'll be in the parade and you're like waving to people and you're like, oh, there they are. Oh, now, look at you two. Two little fireflies just burning together down the bayou. Maybe you guys could actually skip on down to the Magic Kingdom. That would be perfect. <laughs> See a fireworks show. <laughs> Epcot, I feel like, is just like a lawless land. No one really cares. A spaceship Earth. I imagine that's a good make-out ride, because nobody's really paying attention. If I was to bring a date, I would go there. The best place I can think of to go to be alone, and I don't know from personal experience, Morocco in Epcot where you can drink around the world. Morocco has a lot of places that are just like off the path and it just gets you away from the rest of the park. Me and my buddies, our thing was just like finding places to smoke weed basically. There's like pavilions that they made in like 1993 that some ride broke down and like nobody cares because it's Epcot. <laughs> this like pavilion was supposed to be about the human body. So there was this, this whole ride that was like called Body Wars, and now it just sits there and nobody guards it. So you can have your own uh, body wars, so to speak. Thank you for watching. I hope you got to learn a lot of tips and tricks. <laughs> All right, bye you. You get it? But it's like bye you, but it's still reference to the bye you. Mm -hmm. You gotta dig a little deep. Yes, okay. <laughs>